Okay. Um, so yeah, I was chatting uh, to Kevin about this and about you know where where would we uh, where should I go with this? So we came to the conclusion that it's probably best to do a kind of a a local case study with a, a couple of things that I've been involved with, rather than you know trying to do a big theoretical piece that uh, that talks to a lot of um, different issues. So I so suppose the two issues, the two campaigns that I'm going to go through with you today are both in the in the political sphere, and they're both about the idea of trying to engage citizens in political ideas and political processes outside of the normal every five years let's interact with the, uh, the politicians by having a, having a general election. So it's around the, the idea and the concept which the Irish people might be a bit more familiar with because we have a, a constitutional convention, but the, the idea of a citizens assembly where you get um, ordinary random people into a room and you get them to talk about politics and about policies, you get them to deliberate and then it, it feeds through um, into policy. So uh, we started off with one of these in 2011 that we called We the Citizens. Um, it was, uh, we, we raised money from Atlantic Philanthropies, from a, an American billionaire ph philanthropist, Chuck Feeney, who'd been known to Irish people as a, a great funder of sort of educational initiatives and that kind of thing. So we managed to, to persuade him to um, give us the, the money to have this citizen assembly. And what we were doing originally is we were going around the country trying to listen to people. It was a time, obviously, a very deep crisis, which we're, we're still in. Try to listen to people. What were their ideas? What were the main things that they, policies that they would like to see changed in order to get us out of the crisis? But of course, as anybody here who's ever tried to fill a, a town hall in a sort of a, a rainy provincial town on a February evening knows it's pretty difficult to get people engaged enough to, to get them out and so on. And while we had a big budget, our budget was for uh, polling. It, it nearly all went to you know, MRBI research for you know, huge polling so we could have a proof of concept. We didn't really have any advertising and marketing budget at all. Um, we had the, the person, our chairman there, uh, Fiat McNeil, is also the, uh, the director of the Abbey Theatre. So he's a great performer, so he was a, a great help to us in that way. And then we had an, another person who kind of ran things for us, Caroline Erskine, who's a former Paul Corps in RTE. So she was also great and had access. But we were trying to work out how are we going to, you know, get the, the bums in those seats. There's a, an example of, of one of them in a, um, I'm not sure where that, that I think that's in Kilkenny in, um, in one of the <coughs> hotels there. How were we going to get those people to, to turn up without a budget? So we did the usual things, go to local radio and so on. But we found that actually all of us who set it up, there was myself, um, Owen uh, O'Malley, who's a, a political scientist in the School of Law and Government here, David Farrell from UCD, and Elaine Byrne, who's now off in <coughs> Australia. We all had Twitter accounts, so we thought, well, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to leverage our, our Twitter accounts in order to, to try to get this thing done. And the other great thing about Twitter, of course, as uh, was just pointed out, that you know every every hack in the world is there, and all the researchers, and all the producers, and, and everybody else. So if you can start talking about things on Twitter, you can get them into the media. Because one of the problems we found, and again, this speaks a little bit to the the last thing about why politicians like Twitter, is that of course in these sort of things, the polcores are the great gatekeepers. You know, so if you're a polcore in in RTE or in one, one of the newspapers, you're used to being the guy who decides what it is that's going to be mediated between the, the citizens. So if something's a new idea is coming up and you don't particularly like it or it doesn't really suit you in your agenda, you don't necessarily have to talk about it a lot. So being able to go through Twitter allowed us to have unmediated conversation without the, the pod course as well, if you like. And uh, that's just being honest in front of this audience. It's not something that we'd, um, we'd sort of normally say. So anyway, we all went through and did it. This, that's just a picture of the citizens that we eventually got. We recruited uh, 100 of them to persuade them to give up a weekend to come up to Dublin and not get paid and to talk about things like uh, the fiscal balance and political reform and, and so on. Um, so, and you know, we genuinely put a lot of it down to, to social media. So I'll just show you a few of the, the kind of graphs that I managed to pull off uh, Topsy for it. So the first one, the interesting thing is, you can see that all the main influencers, there's David Farrell I told you about myself, Elaine Byrne is over there, 
our own one, Faith McNeil over here. We were all people who worked with it, Matthew and Claude, our other uh, political scientists. One of Sarah's colleagues, Mark Coleman there, um, he's a journalist, he's one of the few that, that was in there and that's because he disagreed with us so much. But you can see it was very much us personally kind of driving this. And what we had at our meetings is we knew it was important to get on Twitter, but we just had sort of master's students who'd come along and use the, the thing and tweet out, you know, what was happening. And, you know, we occasionally got our hashtags trending and that kind of thing. But it was smaller, so you'll see how that developed in the, in the second one. And then the other kind of influencers that went on. So we had people, David, who's in the back of the room there. Look, David, you were one of the key influencers. Um, Another guy, Jerry Cunningham, who's a, who's a uh, freelance um, journalist who, again, was very against us. Uh, same with Simon McGar. So there was you know, a mixture of people who were kind of, you know... But the main thing from our point of view is that there was conversation, whether people were agreeing with what we were doing or uh, not agreeing what w with what we were doing. So you can see here, this is just kind of the... Um, you know, the, the, the spikes. So the spikes were always when we had the public meetings and you can see the spikes that go across there and the main sort of words that were used. So interestingly, Vin B, um, even though we only had one outing on uh, Vin B, which didn't go very well at all from our, our perspective, I had to get a, a T-shirt, I survived Vin B to wear the, the, the next day. You should dozen. probably tell our guests what Vin B is. <laughs> okay, Vin B is the, um, the, I think we were talking about him earlier, Vincent Brown, the TV3 late night one that uh, Dave McRedmond was saying he was trying to sell to the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland as light entertainment. Um, so, well, I suppose he is. It's a bit like a gladiatorial sort of ring, you know. But uh, So anyway, we, we very much sort of trended on that, and that's where people talk about politics and things. So again, for us, that was a result. And it meant that the, the, it meant that the politicians were, were engaged with us. I think, you know, we just wouldn't have been able to do this without Twitter um, and beforehand. We started off with the thing where we had, we have these um, comedians, that's Barry Murphy there, who do political satire. And uh, we found that that gave us lots of tweets, but then people were a bit uncomfortable with sort of having political satire in the middle of the meetings. So despite the kind of coverage it gave us, we had to uh, drop uh, Barry and Gary Cook and everything, unfortunately, because they were a good crack at them. Um, and that's just to show you there our sentiment, so it was generally positive. But, you know, there was a lot of debate as well, so you can see the negative sentiment there with people unsure how um, it would all work out. And amazingly enough, it was all over the world. Well, not all over the world, but North America, um, here, the UK, and uh, across into Oz and so on, and, and Brazil. So, you know, th that's the other huge advantage. We never would have got any of that without engaging on social media and on uh, Twitter. So the, next, the second project then is one that's ongoing at the moment, which is the Irish Constitutional Convention. Now that's run by the government and they have their own secretariat and so on, but a lot of it follows the model from We the Citizens. So there's 66 um, members of the public in there, 33 politicians, and they come together to discuss various issues. The, the government gave them the first um, six or so issues which th they've almost completed and then they'll get to talk about their own one, which again they're going to go around the country and see what it is that people want to talk about. So, so far the government has promised, for example, a referendum on lowering, lowering the voting age out of this. There's um, another one which they've yet to say what they're going to do, which is making the constitution gender neutral and you know removing the... Uh, the bit about a woman's place being in the home, uh, gay marriage, which was a huge bit. Um, so the big spikes were around gay marriage because a lot of people engaged with, with that. Uh, we have blasphemy and votes for immigrants coming up in the, in the next couple of months. Um, so you can see, yeah, that just gives you an idea of the kind of the spikes. So gay marriage is, is, uh, is a huge one in terms of that. But the influencers, Art O'Leary, who was going to be here, but I don't see him. Art is the secretary to the convention, and he's brilliant at, at, at his job. But one of the great things he did is instead of having sort of um, students or other volunteers in just using our um, uh, Twitter account during these, he brings in people who, who are interested in the different uh, debates. So Susie Byrne, who you see there, is... Um, 
you know, very well known on Twitter in Ireland and as a disability campaigner. So you can see she's one of our, or Veronica Walsh, V Current Affairs, again, very well known on Twitter in Ireland and always very involved in all political discussions. So they come in for the weekend. They don't get paid or whatever, but they sit down the back and observe and send out tweets. So we found that, you know, this has been really helpful in kind of getting the message out uh, more widely. Uh, you can see David is still there, but Finon Sheehan, who's the, um, the political editor of the Indo, is there as well. Ken Curtin up, the, up here, he's another one of the guys we brought in who's a, a sort of a general political tweeter who would no, be known to most people in Ireland for that. So the kind of the, the model of where we were the main influencers has been changed now to actually getting these other people in to, to tweet about it, and uh, so that really uh, moves it on. Some topics obviously were better, so gay marriage was a, a huge one for us. Um, those were just some of the, the top tweets, I don't think you can really see them, but uh, the, I thought this one was funny. The, the bottom one there is AnnieWest.com, which any of you don't know her, she's a really funny, uh, really good cartoonist who lives in Sligo in the, the west of Ireland, so she's worth checking out, but I thought her... Uh, one of the, uh, the citizens stood up at the gay marriage debate and said, well, the consequence of you know, allowing gay marriage is that, well, gay people would be allowed to marry. So um, this was uh, Annie's uh, uh, representation of that afterwards, so I just thought I'd bring that to you for, uh, <laughs> for your amusement. Um, but that was one of our most tweeted uh, tweets as, as, a, as a result of the, of the convention. The other thing is that we found through the Twitter that the actual participants in it, a lot of them then set up Twitter accounts. This guy, Chris Lyons, is one of our uh, convention members and, uh, from Cork, and he's young, but he, didn't, he never used Twitter really before he came. And now you can see him, he's there, and he's, Jerry Buttermer is, a, is an MP, a TD here. And you know they're conversing backwards and forwards on Twitter, so it builds up new networks and new ways of communicating and so on. And again, it's um, all over, uh, um, it's got a, a greater geographic spread than we had last time. You can see it there in um, Spain and France and, and Germany and the Nordic countries and greater parts of South America. So um, the, the debate on gay marriage, for example, there it's live streamed like we are today. So it, it was caught that weekend by 20,000 people in 17 countries. So, and what, you know, we do think that a lot of this kind of catching up is because we're able to, you know, push it and, and talk about it um, on social media and so on. And uh, just still winning, but, you know, still lots of detractors, but lots of conversation, which is, uh, which is the good thing. So, thank you very much. Thank you.